why? Why didn't I listen to you? Why didn't I listen to all those people who told me that you would bankrupt me? I'm such an idiot. I've got no money left and we've got Christmas coming up. Hang on. Oh, it's the bank. I've got loads of money left for Christmas. What am I worried about? Thanks, Heat Pump. Well, in that case, I'd better go and buy some toys for the dogs. Because it's Christmas after all. Should we get some toys, boys? Come on then, let's go. <laughs> Come on, let's go. So it's been a whole month. We've had the heat pump running for a month now, and fingers crossed we've had no issues whatsoever, no need to call out Octopus. The house has been lovely and warm, um, and the comments from everybody has been that, you know, it, it just feels lovely when you walk into the house, the house is at a great temperature. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna share with you all of my data from that first month. Now, you shouldn't use this data and extrapolate it because it's one month, it's uh, the beginning of winter, it's likely to get colder, but what we'll do is we'll look at one month's worth of data, and then as we go through next year, I'll share with you my experiences of owning a heat pump for that year. Okay, so let's dive into some numbers. Now, I'm gonna apologize up front. There's a lot of graphs and numbers in this that uh, hopefully, if you're just looking for the, uh, the final numbers, I will put a timestamp in the description below so you can jump straight to the end if that's all you're interested in seeing. But if you wanna see how I arrived at those numbers, then stick with me for the next couple of minutes and we'll walk through these. So the first thing to say is your mileage may vary. Every single person's setup is gonna be different. Some people will have solar and batteries, some people won't, some people will be on different tariffs. So these are my numbers. Please take that into mind. Don't base any calculations you're doing off of my setup. So this is our system. This is what we have in our house that's gonna help me arrive at the numbers at the end there. So we have a 9.6 kilowatt solar array. Now that's, I would say, a medium, si medium to large size solar array, for, certainly for a three bedroom house. We have 36 kilowatt hours of battery storage and we have a six kilowatt Daikin heat pump. We also run two electric cars and we've done everything we can to be as energy efficient in our homes. Hopefully you saw my video the other day on our heat pump tumble dryer. If you haven't, I will leave a, a link up in the top corner of the screen. So if you wanna go check that out, but that is a great way to reduce your energy usage in your house, especially if you're a large family and you use a tumble dryer a lot. And we're also kind of a minimal gas user. Um, we used to use gas obviously for central heating, we haven't disconnected it yet because we still have a gas hob in our kitchen, but that will go next year when we redesign the kitchen and then we'll be completely electric household. Okay, let's talk about the weather for the last month because it's been strange. We've had some really cold days where it's been down to sort of minus three, minus four degrees. We've had some mild days where I've been running around in a t-shirt at uh, 12 degrees and my wife thinks I'm insane running around in a t-shirt when it's 12 degrees. Um, we've had some really windy days and we've had some days where the weather has just been grey and flat. But we've also had just a very small amount of solar generation. There's been a lot of cloud over the sort of November, beginning of December. Um, so we haven't had a great deal of power from our solar panels. But we do use our batteries to charge up at night during the cheap rate electricity periods and we'll come back to that later. We're on the Octopus Go tariff. Now, before everybody starts screaming, you should be on Intelligent Go. Um, we are gonna move to Intelligent Go probably just after Christmas. And the reason is, is that Go is a little specific. You have to have the right cars or the right chargers. And Go really just doesn't support having two electric vehicles. However, after talking to Octopus, they've given us a workaround that lets us turn one of the chargers off, sign up to get Intelligent Go, then turn the other charger back on and it should all work. So I will uh, I will report back on if that works later on. And we're on Flexible Octopus for our gas. So these are the prices that we pay, uh, 26.72 pence per kilowatt hour during the day, 8.5 pence per kilowatt hour at night, and 6.16 pence per kilowatt hour for gas. Okay. I'm gonna talk about money today rather than kilowatt hours and coefficients of performance and all of these things. So 
we're going to focus on the actual pounds and pence rather than uh, than other numbers. If anybody wants those numbers, reach out to me, happy to provide them to you. During the presentation, I'm going to use the graphs directly out of the Octopus app. Rather than me recreate them, I'm just going to show you exactly what appears on my bills. So from the 18th of November, that was the day after we had the heat pump installed, um, to today or yesterday, midnight yesterday, we have spent £180.87 on electricity. Now that's 1,455.5 kilowatt hours of power. Now I'm sure some of you are going, I don't spend that much on electricity for three months, never mind in one month. But we'll come back to why that's so uh, such a large number in a moment. You can see in there there's four or five very large spikes. And we'll come to those in a, in a minute. We also exported during uh, the month 169.26 kilowatt hours for a discount off of our bill of £25.39. Now, how are we able to export? You said at the beginning we didn't have an awful lot of solar. Well, the way we operate in the winter months is we fill our batteries up in the morning between midnight and 5.30 in the morning, and then we run the house all day. Then as we get to the end of the day, anything that is left in those batteries, I export back to the grid. That means I get the delta between the eight and a half pence that I bought it for and the 15 pence which I sell it back. So it's a very small amount of money that you make, but it's well worth doing. If you have that capacity, give it back to the energy company, then buy it back at a cheaper rate. So again, we exported 169.26 kilowatts for a, a, a discount of £25.39 off of our energy bill. Now this is where it starts to get interesting. So our first month without the heat pump, our gas has dropped to £10.58. Now you'll notice there, over half of that cost is the standing charge. So this is the impetus that I need now to get on, get the kitchen redesign done, and get that gas turned off because over half of the money I'm giving them is just for having the gas meter. I'm not actually using that much gas at all. In fact, we only used 38.2 kilowatt hours of gas for the whole month. So if we take a look at those and we add them all up, so we imported 180 pound 87 pence worth of electricity, we got a discount off of that of 25 pounds 39 for our export and we spent another 10 pounds 58 on gas. That brings our energy for the entire month to 166 pounds and 6p. But that's not the whole story. We get quite a few free energy periods here in East Anglia. East Anglia is probably one of the least densely populated parts of the country. It's very flat, um, lots of farms, but relatively few people compared to some of the more dense parts of the country. But offshore from East Anglia, we have some of the largest wind farms. So there is an excess of energy that the energy companies don't have the ability to store. So when we get a really windy day and there's a lot of wind in the North Sea, we occasionally get notifications from Octopus to say, between these certain hours tomorrow, we're going to make your energy free. And at that point, I take full advantage of it and I charge the cars, I charge the batteries, I store as much of that free energy as I can. So in the month that we're looking at, we got £52.20 uh, worth of free electricity from Octopus. That's what those big spikes were in the graph. That was me sucking in as much of that free energy as I possibly could. So when we take that into account, our total bill for the month to run our house, to charge our cars, to run the heat pump and everything was £113.86. Now let's take a look at that compared to a year ago. So a year ago, um, I was with Octopus at the same time. So again, we've got like for like graphs here. So our energy bill a year ago uh, was £131.29. So we've actually spent more on energy this month than we had uh, previously, uh, roughly £49.48. But that's not the cost of running the heat pump. And we'll come back to why in a moment. We also had some free energy a year ago in 2023. So we had £39.84 in free energy in November and December uh, 2023. Our gas has gone down considerably. So now I don't have a year ago's worth of gas. Um, a year ago for my gas, I used to be with Ecotricity. Um, and Dale, being the eco-warrior that he is, doesn't like sending out paper bills. So they put everything online. 
and the minute I moved my gas to Octopus, they just deleted all of my records. So I have no ability to go back and get my gas bill from November 2023. But if we look at the month before, we look at October 2024, you'll see we used 686.22 kilowatt hours of gas for 50 pounds and 21 pence. And now with the heat pump installed, that has gone down to 38.218 kilowatt hours. So for 10 pounds and 58. And like I say, half of over half of that is the standing charge. So we've saved nearly 40 pound in gas just in one month from the previous month. And in October, we only started really using the heating, uh, the, the boiler to heat the house roughly around about the middle of the month. So that number really could be a lot higher. So when we compare the years, 2023 to 2024, just with that one exception for the gas, um, we spent £141.66 on energy in 2023. And in 2024, we spent £113.86. So quite a significant saving. But I want to be fair here when I compare the numbers. So I'm going to take out the energy export because a year ago I did not have an export tariff. So I wasn't paid for any export. So it would be unfair to compare the export from this year to the export from last year. I know in the real world we would compare them. But if we look at the figures without energy export in there, £141.66 for 2023 and £139.25 for 2024. So we've moved from gas to electric for our heating and it saved us a very small amount of money. So what would it have cost if you were running this with no solar, no battery storage, just on a standard Octopus Tracker tariff? Now, according to Octopus's website, the Tracker tariff at the moment is at 20 pence or 20.84 pence to be exact per kilowatt hour. So if we look at the actual energy consumption of the heat pump for that period, the heat pump itself drew 394.12 kilowatt hours at 20.84 pence. That means, that means to run the heat pump on electricity would have cost £82.13. Now, I don't believe for a minute anyone who owns a heat pump is going to be running it on the tracker tariff. They're going to be on a minimum of being on cozy. And if they have an EV, they're probably going to be on one of the, the cheaper overnight tariffs. But that's the worst case scenario. So if we take out those export payments, our heat pump saved us £2.41 this month. It's not going to change the world, is it? But the reality of the situation is we do have those export payments, so really it saved us £27.80 off of our energy bill. So by moving from gas, I would say 90% of it from gas to electricity, we've made a saving of about £27.80. I'm sure somebody is already saying, well, if you divide that by the cost of the heat pump, it means the heat pump will never pay for itself. And yes, it would be a very, very long payback period. But I was also at the point where my gas boiler was on its last legs. Um, in fact, for the previous five years, every time the gas boiler engineer came to do the yearly service, he would remind me that this thing is so old, they don't even make the spare parts for it anymore. And at some point it will die and you will have to replace it. So we've replaced the gas boiler. So the, the cost was going to be spent anyway, uh, three to four thousand pounds probably to replace the boiler and the tank and the radiators. So we've moved to the heat pump. We've got a very small saving in our first month. But again, I'm not going to base these figures just on one month's uh, usage. Our house has never been so warm. It is it is lovely to just walk into a constantly warm house. Now, we don't heat our house in, in bursts. We don't use the cheap period to heat the house right up and let it cool back down. We keep the house at a constant temperature throughout the whole day. So, yes, you could probably make some economies there with the, the cost of how you would heat it, but it's much nicer just to have a house that is consistently warm. Now, please don't go calculating any return on investment on one month's data. You need a much bigger sample set. So over the course of the next year, I'll keep reporting back on what it's cost. Obviously, it will cost more to run in the winter than it would in the summer. But at the end of the full year, we'll aggregate them up and we'll actually do a proper ROI calculation. And remember, I'm not bankrupt. So all of the people who said, this will bankrupt you, these things don't work. Well, my house is nice and warm. It hasn't cost me any more money to run this thing than, uh, than it had to do it with gas. In fact, I'm slightly better off. It's not producing any noxious fumes or CO2. 
and all through the spring, summer and autumn, it'll be running on free energy from solar. So was it a good decision? Yeah, absolutely damn straight. It was a brilliant decision to get it installed. I hope you found this useful. Um, slightly different format from my usual videos, but if it has been useful, please do hit that like and subscribe button down below. It really helps me grow the channel and I'd love to hear your feedback on this new format and see what you think of it. With that, I'm going to sign off because I can hear dogs chasing squirrels outside. So I better go and see what's going on out there. And if I'm lucky, I'll see you all back here real soon for another video. Take care.